Hey everybody, Josh with Gribble Concepts here, uh, bringing you the final version of my modified Invcare Torque SP power chair. In the last video, I've uh, checked the card above, uh, I talked about when I got this five months ago about the changes I was going to make in the next week or two and all the videos I was going to do about it. Um, that was a lie. I didn't, I didn't get that done. But uh, the good news is I do have it done now and tomorrow I'm going to swap over into this chair. Um, but I want to walk you through the video before I got in it while I could show you the whole chair, some of the changes I made to it. Um, I'm going to use a really cheesy pointer stick here and an old dowel that I've got. I had intended to move the seat, um, this whole upper seat frame back on the frame by loosening these bolts and underneath this rubber strip here there's a uh, T-slot and you can actually slide that whole base or the whole seat back and forth on the base. My intent was to do that. However, when I pulled the seat pan off, it turned out there was actually two mounting positions on the frame between the mounts down here in the, the mount of the frame and the seat itself. That allowed me to move it back, I believe, two inches, which was, whatever it was, was exactly how far back I needed to move it to match my current chair. So that ended up being easy. I just shifted that back. Um, of course, I added my Cripple Concepts side bag. I have a few more of them available on the website, and then I probably won't be ordering more because they didn't sell real well, but I love these things. Um, let's see. Caps. I talked about how these caster caps from the factory fall off all the time. They're just a poor design, they stick up. These are actually tube caps. Learned these uh, about these from my friend Don Russell. Uh, her husband had put those on her chair. They snap down in, they're meant to cap the end of tubing. You see them on a lot of equipment and stuff, on square tubing a lot. I'm gonna be selling these on the website. Um, the, I had to buy a bag of like 25 of them. So I'll throw them up on the website. Shipping will probably cost as much as the actual caps but I think they look better and they're far more functional. You had to actually get a screwdriver under them and pop them up and out of there if you want to get them out. And those will protect the bearings on the caster housing here. So that's, that's real important. Um, got a bottle rack, a little, it's a water bottle holder for a bicycle. Uh, mounted that to the T-slot here. Um, it's built into these new seating systems. Um, that's gonna allow me to carry my water underneath my chair. Right now I lay it on my lap. I've had other cup holders, I haven't liked them. We'll see how this works. I think I'm going to like it because it's a little bit tucked underneath. Um, my bottle has a little hook on it that I can hook my finger in. So I think I'm going to like that a lot. Um, footrest. The footrest is probably the biggest thing I change on a wheelchair. I hate foot plates. One of the reasons I didn't go to a power chair way sooner than I did was I didn't like the stupid foot plates. Every time I hit a bump, my feet flew off. That's stupid. I like a hoop similar to what a manual chair has. So I build my own hoops now. Um, these aluminum brackets slide back and forth on these bars that I also have to build. Um, they have a machine slot and a hole in here with a pivot. Um, then I have a threaded uh, bolt that I machine the end on to make it into a little like spade. That slides or that screws down into the tubing um, that I use for the footrest. This is three quarter inch, yeah, I believe three quarter inch, pretty thick wall tubing. Um, and then I mount the rubber bumpers on there. And that's what happens when I hit a bump. My feet, just the whole footrest bounces up a little bit. When I want to go closer to a piece of equipment, I just drive into it and it pushes, pushes into those rubber bumpers. Um, this has been Huge. This is this has helped me out so much. Uh, I'm actually going to turn the chair a little bit so maybe you can see that from the front. These, you know, sometimes it's the little things. It took me a lot of years to get this to where I, I have it now, um, and I think I've got this set up pretty dialed. I I'm super stoked about this. Um, these are something I would consider selling. I think I mentioned that in the previous video. I would consider selling them. Um, they're custom, they involve a lot of measure and a lot of figure to make sure I get it right, to get these double bends right, to get the width of the actual footrest down here right. Um, I'm willing to do one. Um, if, if you're interested, contact me. Um, 
but it, it, it wouldn't be cheap. It, it would cost quite a bit because frankly, they're a lot of work. Um, and I'll probably have to do, on the, like even on this one, I had to do two to get it exactly right. So um, yeah, but I love them. I love these footrests. I, I, hope, I hope somebody from Invocator is watching or Permobile or Quickie or I don't care who, one of you manufacturers, start putting on foot hoops as one of your options, but a good solid foot hoop like this that won't break. Uh, all right, I digress enough on that. Um, I'm gonna drive the chair a little closer to the camera. So I talked a lot about how I don't like the TV screen joysticks, and that's what they come with from the factory. Um, if you watched the previous video, um, this joystick, this, this is called a compact joystick, this was mounted to a rail back here on the side, and it could slide forward and backwards, but that was it. My, my shoulder gets really sore when I drive in the retracted position on a standard joystick with retracting option. It just puts my shoulder in a really bad position and I, I'm tired of the pain. So um, I decided to get smart and I built my own, as I take out some steel here, let me back up a little. Right, lots of banging around here, but I should have been able to get it here in position. Yeah. So I built this little post mount for my joystick now. And you say, well, how are you gonna get up to a table? How are you gonna get up close to things? That's what you hated about the TV screen, right? Well, that's true. So I've got a little pivot pin down here. I turn the pin. Now, granted, this is much easier when you're in the chair. It's a lot harder when you're sitting out here to the side. And the entire joystick assembly drops down. Now when the cushion's in the chair and my leg's in here, this is about the height of my knee. So I can just drive under a desk. My arm will go underneath the desk as I drive in. I might even have to lean forward to get under some things. But my arm being forward doesn't hurt. My arm being low doesn't hurt. It's my arm in the back position to drive that really, really tears up my shoulder and my neck. So um, I think this is going to work really, really well. Um, I built this small aluminum pad. It's a little bigger than the, about twice the size actually, the compact joystick assembly itself. I actually looked on my current chair at where I've worn the paint off on the joystick. So the back part of my wrist and my palm can rest on this corner right here of the aluminum while I drive. So uh, I really think that's gonna work out super duper well. Um, you can see here, I got the, I uh, gotta have a Cripple Concepts charger. One of the problems I have on my current chair is it's old and has the charge port underneath. So I couldn't really demonstrate my chargers real well. So, fix that problem. Each armrest actually has an XLR connector in it, all tied into the wiring harness. So I can have a charger on this side, maybe a charger on this side with a light in it or something. And then underneath the two spots, or the spot over here where my current chair charges, I put a connector and I put one on the other side. So I can actually run four of my uh, USB chargers off of this chair at any time, uh, mostly for demonstration purposes. I don't really know that I have a need for that. Um, it's a cool factor, but it's also just a functional so I can show off what I sell. Um, so, so yeah, that should work pretty well. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to Tim. Tim, if you're watching, Tim with two M's, Tim. And a lot of people who know Wheelchair World will know him from message boards and whatnot. Uh, Tim and I have talked a bit about how I need to start offering a, a, a mount for phones um, that really works well on chairs and allows you to plug in the USB cable to charge them. This is one that I've been playing around with for a while. I, I like it. I think it's something that most people can get their phone in and out of. Um, I don't know the brand. I, if it works out good on this chair, I will do a little review and I'll put a, a link up so people know what kind this is. Just clamps on anything round. So I have it clamped up here. It could clamp down on the footrest. It could clamp on, on these verticals. It could clamp on about anything on the chair. So I think most people could find a spot to clamp this and then it holds the phone just from the sides. Um, but seems to be pretty secure. So I'll test that out a bit more and see how that works. The backrest 
the angle was wrong, the, the brackets they used were not great. Um, I, I swapped them out to ones that were shorter so they'd be less likely to gouge my arms. You can kind of see on the inside of my arm right now, I've cut it open a couple times recently on my current chair. Right now, like you're only seeing one arm because I'm hooked around the back of my chair with my other arm. I have no use of my trunk muscles, so that's how I stabilize myself. So let me see if I can spin it around here and show you the backrest. So you probably won't be able to see real well. Um, there's these very light backrests have the old ones had an okay design. I think these ones are a little bit worse on the new ones. Um, they they're just a little like quarter inch and maybe probably like three sixteenths inch wide steel uh, bracket and it, it was going to dig in my arm. This is the lower one I'm pointing at here. The upper one it was going to dig in my arm. So I actually printed 3D printed little bumpers that I put on the ends of them. So as my arm hooks on there, it's it's a rounded square. So that should be really soft on my arms. Shouldn't shouldn't tear up the insides of my arms like this. The one thing that might still is the belt. Um, I wear the chest strap so I don't fall down. Um, I have that screwed in right now with a uh, self-tapping metal screw and it's got a hex head. I think it's up far enough in here that I won't get my arm caught in it. If I do, I'll swap that out for probably a Phillips head sheet metal screw. Um, that's what's on my current chairs and Phillips head sheet metal screws. Um, I just feel like I can tighten these up a little bit better. So I'm hoping that that works out okay, but that might, might get swapped out yet. Um, yeah, and other than that, um, underneath, I, it's a little complicated under the seat rest. You can see this red and black wire here. Those are the wires to all the charge ports I added to the chair. Um, and those tie into a box underneath where I tie them all together with it. And then I have a circuit breaker and a fuse in that. I have a 15 amp circuit breaker and a 20 amp fuse. Yeah, so the circuit breaker should pop before the breaker would. Um, so that's, yeah, that's all, all set. The only other thing is I talked about needing to have a display that part of those new TV screen remote or uh, controllers is you have to have the display. So when I went to the compact joystick, I was still required to have a display. Well, you notice the display is gone and the chair still drives, right? How's that magic work? Well, I don't care about the display. I showed you. I showed you in that last video. The display doesn't show you anything meaningful anyway. So the display is down here now. I cut a hole in a little plastic hood underneath of here, and I put it up through there so the charge port on the back of it sticks out. I used the original clamp they had actually used on the big hunky apparatus over here to hold it, to hold it in that plastic cover. And then my wiring harness with the four charge ports plugs into the back of that. So it's all tied in through there. I had to cut a little hole in this so I could reach in. There is a switch on that display to turn it on and off. Now, if you don't turn the switch off, it will slowly draw down the battery. Even though there's no power going to the motors, the, just the display being lit will draw down the battery. Learned that the hard way um, because I didn't charge it for a while and it wouldn't take a charge. Had to pull out the batteries, hit them with a uh, car battery charger overnight, one, one each night. And uh, they seem to be working fine now. I think I revived them. But I still need an on off switch. I can reach down underneath. I can hit that little toggle switch. It's not easy, so that will not be my primary on and off. So I have, um, they make momentary buttons for these to do different functions. I have one on this chair. So right now, if you listen, Hopefully you can hear the click that the motors make when they engage. If I reach underneath the here, I have the button underneath the 
rail. So I just bump the button, nothing, it's off. Now this is an annoying thing in Vicar, again, if you're watching, I wish you'd give another a beep or something when I turn it off. Because if you listen when I hit the button again, that double beep means that it's on. Now it'll drive. Uh, stupid. I don't, I don't understand why there's not a beep when it goes off. I want to know when I turned it off. Right now, I hit it to turn off. The only way I know it's off is to hit that joystick and see if it takes off or not. So some kind of an indication would be nice. Uh, maybe I'll rig up a light or something on it that I have like a little LED that lights up. Uh, more than likely, I'll just hit the joystick and see. I mean, I can handle that, but for a new chair user, I think that would that'd be a bit irritating. Um, I wish it offered an option that didn't mean stuff in a screen that probably cost $2,000 under a hood where I can't look at it. I only have one drive mode programmed in this because I only need one drive mode. I know how to drive. I don't. I never use the, the knob that's changing my speed on my chair. My aides do when they move it. They're going to have to learn to kick out the clutches and move this by hand. That's fine. Um, I, I don't need that. I just, it is stupid. So anyway, I, I got that all stuffed underneath. I got it basically the same as the chair I'm in. Um, it's as, as similar as it can get. The only other thing, and you can't see it, and I don't even know I can get the camera in where it is, but I'll talk about it for a minute, is the easy lock. The lockdown for my van became a problem. In my last video I said, maybe I'll build one, maybe I'll get one from the, um, the wheelchair van place. Um, the place in town here is called Performance Mobility. So I called Performance Mobility, and I'm gonna call them out here on film, and I hope they see this. I called them. They wanted, I think, $800 for the mount and installation. So I said, well, how about just for the mount? I don't need you to install it. I got the chair, I, I can install it, I'm competent. Can't sell it to you, won't sell it to you. Refused to sell it to me without their installation. So I have friends, I have, steel i've got saws i you know fixed the problem myself so called my buddy corey did insane fabrication and uh said hey can can you build me up this mount i'll draw it for you can you cut the plates for me on your plasma and your cnc plasma cutter and uh weld them up for me i want good solid welds so no problem took care of it took it up there he built it for me screwed it in it's solid, it's way, way bigger, stronger than the one in my chair now. The factory ones are basically sheet metal, and I used, uh, if I recall, I used 3 16 on the side plates and half inch for the cross plate on the bottom. So I uh, probably added 20 pounds to the chair, but uh, if I flip my car over, the one problem I'm not gonna have is my lockdown break in. That, that bastard's solid. So. Uh, thanks, Corey. Appreciate that. And uh, hopefully I never need to test it to prove that it's actually that strong. But he welded it all the way around, ground it all clean. It's it's uh, it's nice. And it was fit perfect up in there. So, um, yeah, that was, a, that was the last modification. Um, along the way, I'll probably still try to do, I want to do black tires front and rear. Um, other than that, I mean, I got to throw a cushion in it. I have a brand new cushion for it, but that's in the house. I didn't want to get it any metal chips or anything on it out here in the shop. So I'll put that on in the morning. Um, I'm gonna take it to the house now and get a good charge on it. Uh, put the cushion on in the morning and in theory, everything from now on will be in this chair, not in this old hunk of junk. Um, though I will probably bring the old hunk of junk out here and do just a round around it at the end of this video, just so you guys can see what I'm upgrading to. Um, same concept, but much newer, much better condition than the one I'm in now. And I have no reason to believe that this chair won't last me the next 10 to 15 years. I've gotten 15 years out of the current chair, almost 16 years out of the current chair. I think I can get that out of this chair. Um, I actually am way easier on chairs than I used to be. Um, I don't go out as much. I don't take public transit in that. So um, this chair should last me. Um, and hopefully the next chair will be something that I build myself. Hopefully this will be the last chair I need that's a factory built chair. Um, I, I'm very disciplined in wheelchair technology. I think it could go a lot farther. I think we should have a lot better equipment than what we do for the money it costs the government for most part on um, private insurance as well. 
And I actually think even if we had to go to the private pay market, we could build a far superior machine for far less money that people could buy out of pocket. There's a lot of money in these chairs that's tied up in government bureaucracy of certifications and oversight and billing and, and that just really drives the cost of these things up. So um, I hope to come up with something cheaper um, that, you know, maybe more people could just afford to buy out of pocket and bypass the insurance and uh, get what they really need and not worry about all the FDA approvals and that. Uh, maybe we'll have to call it something other than a wheelchair, but um, what do we have to do to make it work so people can actually get the equipment they need for a price they can afford. Anyway, um, that's, that's all I got on that. Um, I'm uh, kind of excited to move over to this new chair and uh, be done with this old, uh, I, I hate to call it a hunk of junk. It's, it's, uh, it, it has been my, my uh, mobility for the last 15 years of my life. It's taken me a lot of good places. I've uh, seen a lot of this country from this chair. I've driven a lot of miles in this chair. I've uh, met a lot of important people while I've been in this chair. This, this chair has served me well, uh, better than any pair of sneakers has. So uh, I, I'm, I'm a little sad to, to make the move, but I'm also looking forward to having something that performs a little bit better. Um, it lasts me a little bit longer and uh, quits breaking down. The, the one I'm in is just starting to fall apart. It's, it's, it's gotten a little too old and, um, been used hard and put away wet a few too many times. So uh, the new one, new one should be a lot nicer. So thanks for watching. And if you didn't check out the previous video about this chair, I really encourage you to go back and look at that one. See, see what it looked like from the factory. Um, well, I say from the factory, from New Motion after they put everything on it. And uh, yeah, you get an idea of how much, how much different it actually is. This isn't five months worth of work to get it here. It took me five months because I've worked on it a day here, a day there. Um, I think it's about probably two weeks worth of actual work that it would have taken me two full weeks of my time to get this to where it is today. Um, so just to give you an idea of how long it takes to, to kind of make it really work for somebody, um, I think two weeks is about what it would take me to, to take a brand new chair and get it to the point where it's, it's good to go for me. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll be shooting some more videos in the near future. Thanks.